Hi there guys, I hope you're doing fine and uh, so in this video here we're going to be solving some past paper questions, mainly paper 2 on the first ever chapter of biology which is cells. Now I have made uh, the video on cells and you can find my video on this chapter on YouTube. Unfortunately it's not available on Facebook due to some technical issues however the links are mentioned down below so just click on them and you will be directed to the videos that cover the first chapter of biology which is cells. Now before I proceed I just want to say that whether you're from your old levels background or IGCSC or um, GCE regardless of your background you can watch my lectures you can watch my past paper question videos on both paper 1, paper 2 and for the future paper 6 as they are all the same there's not much difference it's there for everyone okay so before we start I just want to uh, do a little bit of a recap about cells um, you know animal cells uh, don't have a cell wall they lack a chloroplast they lack a, a permanent vacuole and plant cells have those three organelles and that both an animal cell and a plant cell contain a nucleus cytoplasm and a cell membrane now, I won't get into much detail, those were just the main points, you can watch those videos, my videos, in the links below to understand. Okay, now this is the question, this is the past paper question taken from the past paper, okay, so we are doing topicals. So that's the first question, so question number one. So figure 2.1 shows a cheek cell from the lining of a person's mouth. This is basically the type of cell you would expect to find inside your mouth, okay. There are experiments done for this type of cell, you know, you just, uh, kind of take this long um, wooden piece right and you it's, it's basically a bit sharp then you basically rub that inside your mouth and then you put it on your microscopic slide and then you place a cover slip and you view it and you should basically find something like this okay okay so yes where are we yeah so this is your typical cheek cell to study it for a moment the trick to solving a paper two is that understand the diagram. Okay, look at the diagram carefully. What students do is that it's you know they do a quick scan of the diagram and just move on with the question. Be patient. Look at the diagram. What is it? It's circular. It's uh, medium sized, and this must be the nucleus, uh, cytoplasm. It's a uh, size is given here, although it's not recommended. Oh, it's it's not needed here right now. It's basically for O levels. You know your magnification, A level. Sorry, magnification stuff. But just understand that this is the magnification. Name the chemical found in the nucleus that controls the production of the protein. We have done this. It's for one mark. Now look at the mark, okay? Look at for how many marks your question is for. This is very, very important, okay? So you need one correct point. Don't write two, three, four, five correct points or don't overfill this with five or six lines. You need one point that has to be correct. So that particular chemical found in the nucleus of every cell that is responsible for your protein production, as we also discussed, that it gives, gives the controls of what should happen in a cell, is your DNA. And to know the full form, it's best to write it down, is deoxyribonucleic acid. That's it, as simple as that. Okay. Okay, let's move on with the... The next question, easy enough, figure 2.2 shows a gamete from the same person. Now this here is a male gamete cell, okay? Uh, describe, okay, part B, okay? Describe how and explain why the two cells differ in appearance. Now look at the physical appearance of the two cells. The question is asking how, like how do they differ, like this is big, this is long, and why? Like there has to be a reason why this is long and this is circular. That basically comes under specialization. Okay, so let's discuss the answers that has been written as per the mark sheet. Okay, rule number one. Sorry, uh, the first thing to understand is that the rule first rule to understand here is that you need to summarize the answer inside your mind. Okay, so just. You think about the points in your mind and don't start writing right away just think about the points in your mind once you have decided a particular format go ahead and write the answer now if you look at my format here here's my for format is I've, t I've actually talked about both the um, structure and function of the two cells like if the cheek cell is round why is it round so I've explained it together that's my format cheek cell has no tail or flagellum while the male gamete does which allows it to swim around and reach the axle fertilization now the, if you read the question it said how well 
circle and this chair has a tail and this chair, this chair does not have a tail. Why? The male gamete needs the tail to swim around and reach the egg cell for fertilization. Now this comes under inheritance and genetics and I'll be making videos on this as well very soon because I had a request from someone to make a video on inheritance and yes I do remember your request and I those videos will be uploaded very very soon okay the cheek cell has a more cytoplasm you can tell like this region here if I shade this with so uh, maybe let's choose um, I don't know blue okay you see this region here this here is your cytoplasm and this here you see here right uh, the cytoplasm should be somewhere here okay somewhere here this generally the cheek cell has more cytoplasm okay that's one also observe observance that you should actually be able to pick out when you looking when you look at this has more cytoplasm than the gamete as the gamete already has enough nutrition for its heavy movement. The cytoplasm contains sugar, ions and stuff from which you get energy, right? Nutrition, your nutrients are there, dissolved in your cytoplasm. And the uh, male gamete already has enough nutrition. That's why it only has a small amount of uh, cytoplasm. But if you want to know why it does, uh, how it has enough nutrition, it basically con control, contains a lot of mitochondria, which produces energy for the cell for its heavy movement okay uh, the very very obvious one the cheek cell is circular and the male gamete is elongated okay why the elongated of the the elongatedness of the male gamete allows it to swim around faster okay also the nucleus is located at the center in the cheek cell yes you can see that this here is the nucleus at the very center and the nucleus uh, of this male gamete is at the front. Here you go. This is the center nucleus at the front. Okay, this is the difference in the male gamete. Why? In order for it to f easily fuse with the nucleus of the female ga gamete. Let's have a little bit of visualization of this. Okay. Let's suppose that okay, this the nucleus is at the center. It doesn't have much role to play except for you know protein production, instruction and stuff. But this case is different. You know this particular case. Let's say this is your ovum, okay, your egg cell, and this here is your, let's say your nucleus, right? Now when the, uh, this male gamete gets inside the ovum, okay, when it fuses with it, the nucleus is at the front so that it quickly and easily fuses with the nucleus of the female gamete. This is the reason why, this is also why it's specialized, okay? Alright, now let us move on. So, uh, okay. In order to fuse okay so this was your for four marks as you can see and yes we've successfully gotten our four marks because we mentioned four points and those four points are correct as simple as that okay let's move on with your B sorry C part one state two ways one second I'll just grab this state two ways in which the nucleus of the gamete this one here differs from the nucleus of the cheek cell. Now the question says how does the nucleus of the male gamete differ from that of the uh, of the cheek cell? I'll just rub this for a second so that the diagram is clear, okay? Okay, moving on to their question. So Yes, there are many ways in which your the nucleus of your gamete is different from the nucleus of your cheek cell. Let us understand that in more detail. Okay, so the first things first, the nucleus of the gamete has a haploid number of chromosomes. Now, we know that generally any normal cell would contain 46 number of chromosomes, which is 23, 23 pairs. But there's a, a bit of an exception. So your male gamete and your female gamete are the exceptions. Now these are the two particular cells that contain the haploid number of cells. Just imagine half haploid. Haploid means half. Half the number of chromosomes, right? Half of 46 is 23. So this cell here, this particular cell, the nucleus here contains 23, okay? Just 23, okay? Sorry if that's not clear. 20 okay not more than 23 okay so uh, this is the first difference this contains 46 this contains 23 while the cheek cell has a diploid remember the terms that I'm using okay diploid 23 pairs this basically means 46 23 plus 23 or 23 into 2 
The male gamete has one sex chromosomes, okay, and while the female has two. This is one other difference. The male gamete can have two chromosomes, two sex chromosomes, while the um, cheek cell here, the nucleus of the cheek cell can have two, which is the XX or YY. No need to get into much detail here about this. This comes under genetics, and then I'll be clearing the concepts from the very top in one of my upcoming videos, okay? As also requested by someone else, so I will be making uh, the video soon for that particular person as well, okay? Okay, so part two. Explain why it is important that the two nuclei are different. Okay, this is for three marks, okay? Why do they need to be different? There has to be a reason. The nucleus of the male gamete fuses with the nucleus of the ovum during fertilization to make a diploid cell or a zygote. But this nucleus has to be different from this nucleus because, you know, this particular nucleus has to fuse with the nucleus of the female cell or the egg cell or the ovum to form a zygote which has a diploid number of cell. What the cell, nucleus of the gametes do is that they restore the diploid number of cells. This is why it needs to be different. So that when the zygote has 46 number of chromosomes and it is successfully restored, during my mitosis, the cell, the new cell, then continues to divide until it becomes into a new living organism. There, three marks are secured. Okay, you need to be very careful with the, what points you're writing. If they're irrelevant or they don't fit into the context or they don't make sense, regardless of being correct, they, you won't get the mark. They have to fit into the context. Be correct as per the situation. Okay, this is the thing about. Um, O levels, our IGCSE, or let it be A levels, or maybe even your GCE, okay? Okay, moving on, we are done with the first question. Let's move on with our second question here. Um, first one, this is for six marks. This is a huge question, okay? Describe the differences, okay? So there are more than one in structure and function between a cell wall and a cell membrane, okay? So let's underline your uh, important points here structure and your function okay these are the two main things to understand here okay okay so um so, the, so there are many differences between your normal cell wall and a cell membrane and i'm not going to explain it because it's going to be a waste of time instead i'm going to talk you th through the answer that i have written down and through the answer you'll not only understand the differences but you'll also understand how to attempt the question and write your answers the formatting the structure and stuff okay so in terms of structure, okay, in terms of structure, so this is how I've uh, kind of made my answer a bit more sophisticated or you can say a bit organized. This part here deals with the structure and this part here deals with the function. That's why they're colored differently, okay, or else in the exam, of course, no one has the time to use a different colored pen in a subject like biology. Okay, so in terms of structure, I also made it clear by writing it down. The cell wall is relatively thick, this is in terms of structure, okay, while the cell membrane is very thin and delicate. So if you just want a, a bit of a visualization, this is how your cell wall should be. This is a very thick cell wall and this is how your cell membrane should be. See, this is how thick this is and how thin this is. Cell membrane, this is your cell membrane, this is your cell wall, okay, just a bit of a visualization. Okay. The cell wall is composed of a type of sugar, or you can say in other words a polysaccharide, which is a complicated sugar or a complex sugar called cellulose, cellulose, okay, which is very rigid, hard, and inelastic. This means that the cellulose is hard, it's strong, right? It's inelastic. When I say inelastic, what I mean is it's something that it cannot be stretched, something that cannot be stretched to an extent that it can you know burst okay this is the advantage of having uh, an elastic cell wall is that no matter how much you fill the cell with any content like water or, or anything the cell wants the cell won't burst because the cell wall is able to withstand that pressure right if it were elastic like a rubber band it would have exploded by now because a rubber band as you can tell from the example it's not strong enough okay the cell wall it mechanically protects the entire plant cell from any damage, okay, and maintains its shape through turgor, and the animal cell does not have any protection. Let's do a little bit of visualization again, okay? Uh, just, let me just rub this out here so that we have space. 
Okay, so what do I, I'm also explaining the concepts here as we study this. Now let's think of this as somewhat as a plant cell, okay? And just to have the cell wall representation, this is something like its cell wall, okay? Uh, it's not clear, it's rough. This is your cell wall, okay? Now suppose if I am filling my plant cell with lots of water, like, you know, lots and lots of lots of water, you should generally expect, oh wait, it's okay. You should expect your plant cell to burst because if you keep filling a balloon with water, it should, ex it should, it should eventually explode. But since there, there is no boundary protecting the balloon, it explodes, right? But in this case here, the, um, this here, the cell wall here basically is inelastic. It means it cannot be stretched. So when it cannot be stretched, it never, it never allows the cell to burst, right? And if you have, if you take an example of, let's say, an animal cell, then this here is your animal cell, your regular shape with no protection, no cell wall. Um, if you fill this up with maybe, let's say, water again through osmosis, you put water in, it does not have the protection. Just like a balloon, it would explode, right? This is the thing to understand here. Okay. Now, in terms of function, the cell wall is fully permeable which means it can allow anything to enter it okay while the plasma membrane is semi permeable which implies that the cell wall has no control as to what enters or leaves the cell and the cell membrane is mainly responsible for this task now the cell wall can allow anything to enter it so it is not in control of what enters and exits the cell that is actually the cell membrane's task it is semi permeable which means it only allows certain certain substances to enter and exit the cell and it is the cell membrane that is in charge of what enters or exits the cell okay protection of the cell wall of the cell is by the cell wall in terms of shape and structure and the cell wall also prevents a cell from bursting since it is inelastic as discussed here both osmosis and active transport occur through the cell membrane only. Now, osmosis occurs through the cell membrane because the cell membrane is semi-permeable. It controls what enters or leaves the cell with its own decision, with the help of the nucleus, of course. Active transport uh, occurs. Active transport needs energy to occur, right? Requiring energy since uh, it can only be achieved with the help of the lipids or fats or certain protein structures that are found in the cell membrane that enables active transport to be carried out from the energy that it provides. So that is how the uh, ions and glucose you know, they are able to move into a cell. Okay, well, that is it for today. Uh, the, that Let's keep it at that. I'll be making more past paper question videos on both paper 1, paper 2, and paper 6 will be coming out soon as well. So if you're watching this on Facebook, like, follow, share, and for the YouTube viewers, subscribe, like, comment, and share this with as, as, my, as many people as you can because I am spreading free and quality education. It is absolutely free, and if there's any special request, I have received a re request to make a video on inheritance and genetics, and it is on its way very soon just some more work to be done so that uh, you know it's perfect you know i just want to ensure that the videos are perfect for you guys and that you get the best of it okay so see that's it for today um see you next week